And we're there. It's day five. Your app works, but it looks horrible, right? If that's the case, stick around till the end of the video, because today we're going to talk about designing and polishing up your uh, project, right? We talked about ideas, set everything up, made it work, you know, went through bugs, through thick and thin with it. And now we're at the very end. Everything is in its place, but the app does not, or your landing page or a particular button does not look the way it's supposed to be looking. So instead of doing this on day one, you're doing this on day five, right? Because everything else is okay. This is now the easy and the fun part that you should be working on, which is again, designing, polishing. And we're going to talk about a little bit about the templates that I use to help myself because I suck at design. So despite building well over 50 projects with AI and despite like all the years that I've spent in startup companies, I, I don't know how to design a UI wireframes, basically. Uh, luckily. There are so many places, great places where you can borrow ideas from these days and give lovable inspiration to create something unique and beautiful. Uh, as, as you will see later in this, I always say it, one of my three core four framework, one of my core four frameworks, uh, actually the third one is called great artists steal, right? And when I say steal, I mean borrow. And when you ask yourself, okay. What is this guy talking about? Where are you borrowing this from? I'm going to just show you a couple of my go-to design libraries that I just love using. Um, and here's a list of them. And then I'm going to give you a couple of design tips, uh, uh, you know, or maybe I should give them before we even start. Right. I really want to emphasize this again. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, most great stuff or good enough stuff is already out there. Uh, instead of trying to build everything from scratch, just try to borrow it from a couple of place, different places and definitely leverage the native functions that Lowable as a tool provides, such as ed its current edit function. And then there's obviously the, what I call a 3S approach. It selects screenshot and sketch, and we're going to go through that in a second, right? Um, let's just go, let's just start me showing you the libraries, like the Number one library right now for any AI tool is called 21st.dev. This is a place where you can just simply create a free account and then browse through a bunch of different UI components, right? Uh, whether you want to add avatars for your testimonial pages, uh, for example, right? Or whether you want to add um, a different type of scroll areas, right? And scroll animations, I've used this animation across two or three projects myself, right? And it's extremely simple, right? We're going to now deploy it and add it uh, into the page right now so that I can show you exactly how it's done. You just click on the animation itself and don't bother yourself with any of this coding or anything. Just go to the top right corner right here and click copy prompt. This tool is built to build prompts for lovable and similar tools, right? And now we can go back to my project right here and just refresh the sandbox. And now we're at the homepage, right? And I don't like how this looks like, and I'm going to switch that over in, and use that other uh, animation instead, right? One of the ways to do that is to uh, use the edit tool to select the component that you want to change. So always leverage the edit tool to let Lovable know what is it that you want to do. Now, you can use the edit tool here as well if you want to change certain aspects or if you select uh, a span like this you can even change the text you know so if it doesn't say explore features but it says features but in this case scenario i don't want to do that what i want to do is i want to just edit this part right here just replace the animation so what i usually do that in, in those situations is i just re-click on the edit button one one cool bit about Lovable is that it allows you to see which line of code this particular uh, section pertains to. So that's always good to know, at least for me personally. And then the only thing that you have to do is say uh, to Lovable that you want to replace this with the current model and that it should read the, the code that you provided it with. So this is pretty much what I would say to it. Like, I want you to replace this visual 
with the one that I'm providing in the prompt below, because it's just to match the rest of the landing page UI and our design guidelines. And then I just paste it, just copy paste it in here. And then I just press play. While lovable, hard at work, uh, we can go to, again, view a couple of more cool things. Let's see, this robot is moving its head. Like, I would never be able to do this, right? I'd never be able to, to actually code this up. Uh, there's other places, right? Like, one of the places that I really love going to is uh, called uh, Mobin. Um, and the reason why I love it is because it gives me uh, wireframes for iOS, Android, and web, right? And, you know, you can get... These are the leading world brands and they are landing pages. Like you can click like, for instance, on Surfshark here and you can see all of the wireframes and pages that they have, like the in-app screens, the marketing pages, the UI elements. So they're just the elements isolated themselves. Um, you can observe their user flows for onboarding, for downloading, for, I mean, you get a complete picture of it right you can click on any of the designs that you like and uh you can uh go and switch from a screen to full page and get a full page right and just download it or copy it or like save it whatever and then you can bring it as a screenshot to lovable one of the, the things that it does great is just it accepts screenshots into the chat and then tries to replicate some of the guidelines. It's not always going to be accurate uh, uh, while doing it, but it's a really good way of uh, getting it to take some of the designs of a landing page that you like, right? Similarly to Shatson, right? So it's, uh, if I even pronounced it well, uh, so it's, it's a fairly similar concept where you can really just go and, and select one of the most more standard libraries uh, in designing products, uh, along with Tailwind. So ta th these are probably the two most famous ones and the ones that most designers would use, right? Let's say you want to design a blog section, uh, right? And, and you just don't know how to concept it. And you don't know how to explain to Wallable, oh, I want this three little tabs or whatever. You can just click here, get the code, right? Um, now, obviously, if you don't want to pay for it, um, because this belongs to Tailwind Plus, there's a hack to it in the sense that you can just simply uh, take a screenshot, right? And you can copy it and go to Lullable and say, um, you know, whatever. Like, can you replicate this? This design on my page. And it will add it, right, to your homepage or something similar. Now, as we were... Um, playing around, uh, you remember that old thing that it had, as you can see, it already implemented this nice looking scrolling animation, um, that I didn't do anything except copying, you know, and pasting the code in and it, it designed it perfectly right now. Maybe I don't like the shadow. You can always say, yeah, I don't like the shadow or whatever. Right. Um, so again, Lullable is re really good at leveraging these types of um, libraries. One other one that I like is called um, Material UI uh, because Material UI gives you a full template. Like, for instance, here you can get a full live dashboard preview and you can go to Lullable and kind of, again, take a screenshot, say, hey, I want my charts to look like this. I want my user tab to look like that. Um, now, there could be some of you that are more hands-on, they're like, no, I want to have more control. And one of the tools that I recommend you to use then, if you're not using Figma, obviously the best, the, the pinnacle of design is you build your own Figma file and you just upload it immediately when you're starting the project in Lovable. And then it, you know, fetches it one-on-one one -on -one, pretty much. Is this app called Excalidraw? So Excalidraw is like, a, a wireframe sketching tool, right? As you can see, for the purpose of this video, I just already sketched something up, like very simple app, right? You just like, you can draw, literally draw wireframes and be like, this is what I want. This is what I want X, Y, Z to look like. You just copy paste. It's very simple, right? Very intuitive. Um, and like, you just, 
I just drew like what my landing page really like logo, home, about features, login. And again, similarly to the previous situation, you make a screenshot, you upload a screenshot and you tell Lovable, hey, this is how I want my page to look like. Personally, I'm not, I'm not doing this, right? I'm mostly, as you can see, going in here, I feel like 20, nobody is at a level right now that 21st step is on. Like these animations are absolutely crazy. Um, the menus, everything they have, uh, this is just beautiful. And I just go in, in here and just take the, the prompt and have Lovable implement it. I've used it across many, many projects. Definitely recommend everybody to, to check it out. Now let's just can, let's just see what Lovable is doing while we're are trying to micromanage it. And then again, I will try to micromanage it here just to show you um, a couple of tricks as well. Uh, so we asked it to replicate the block. And as you can see, it did it exactly as the design was, maybe even better if I'm being honest. So again, you can definitely borrow things, but let's go. And, and do like a micro edit now so that I can show you how editing functions work. So uh, let's say you want to change this button. You want to make it full width, right? All you got to do is click on the edit button, click on the button right here, and you can either change its padding like this, right? I just expanded it manually, right? So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is I'll, I'll put it back the way it, way it was and just say, um, uh, I'll just ask Lovable to uh, modify it. So let me just refresh it and I will say, can you make this button full with full And then I will deploy what I, the other two. So this was the select. Now let's do a screenshot and sketch, right? So I don't know if you can see it because of my screen sharing, but you will see it when I'm done. I would select, uh, I would make a screenshot of that section and then sketch to Lovable what I mean, right? You will see the image when I'm done in a second. So. Now I'm uploading the image. So as you can see, I made a screenshot of the section and then drew what I want exactly to be the outcome, right? And then I just send a message and hopefully Lovable will do it. Well, that's being done. I can also show you a couple of other things that you can do if you want to be more advanced, right? Um, people that really want to micromanage it to a level that I usually don't do it. Like, as you can see, the hover effects here are kind of messed up. There's this new feature. If you go to Lovable and you go to your account settings um, and um, you, you can enable this dev mode, which allows you to do code editing yourself directly lovable. So what I can do is I can go and switch here uh, and, and switch for, into the code and then basically search for the component. So I know that hover is something that I am not happy with. So I can go and check. And personally, I, I don't do this type of stuff, but you know, people that are good at coding, they can quickly find the piece of code that they need to and they can fix it right so sometimes as you can see lovable doesn't necessarily uh do what you're saying to it uh it also depends on what the parent element uh with is uh which you can go here click here and then select the wider element and then maybe instruct it to do that right can you make this div okay full width of the sidebar and that should fix this issue which is exactly what happened. As you can see, now it's full width. I can collapse my sidebar and I'm happy with it. Uh, hope you learned something in this session and we're gonna get our project ready for launch and tomorrow we're gonna go live. We're gonna talk about deployment. We're gonna talk about editing the final settings for your SEO and a couple of more interesting things. See you tomorrow, guys.